Can can you hear anything? I can hear you. <clears throat> wow, I'm I'm really loud today. Mine's yeah. really quiet. Yours is quiet. And well, loud. maybe just in my headphones. It looks like it's loud on the thing. But my microphone is stuck under something. Okay, I'm going to give is. you an adjustment period. Thank you. Okay, now I'm good. I just had to get comfortable so I could lean back in my chair the way that I do. You look so so pink today. Yes, I'm wearing pink. I'm sorry. How does how does it feel? Feels okay. No, honestly, how does it feel? I mean, be honest. I wasn't so keen on it. Pink's not really my color, but <clears throat> I started thinking like I'm being a reverse snob by by pretending like pink is a feminine dainty color, which is why I'm shunning it. That's stupid. Oh, I am feminine and why, dainty. Why were you thinking so I'm why wear were the you hell con- out of this pink? Why were you concerned about it? I don't know. It's just it's how- it's a bubblegum pink. It's like the color that four year old girls wear. Well, uh, uh, should I be really honest with you? You may. Okay, well, I, you know, I set up a trap for you as you came in today. <laughs> and I was, I saw that. I was ready with the camera. And when you rounded the corner and I saw you were wearing pink, I thought, oh, I can't post this. <laughs> <laughs> so I just, just so you know, I think uh, uh, okay, there are reasons for not wearing pink that go beyond... <laughs> I mean, you're trying to be more of an egalitarian. You're trying to be like... I'm just like trying more... to be like, why have I always thought pink was was terrible? Because yeah. it's such a girly... I'm doing air quotes here. Girly color. like. But are you trying to be fair to the color? Nothing wrong with being girly, really. But who are you trying to be fair to? I don't... I don't know. <laughs> Society? I don't know. There was a vague idea in my head when I put this on. And what that idea is sort of left me now. I think it was a personal challenge. Well, it had a turtleneck. I like that. Yeah, that it could be. And I didn't want to dig anymore. Good. A pile of laundry. No, I'm just kidding you. You look good in everything. No, I don't actually. <laughs> <laughs> you do, but anyway. I wear those flannel nightgowns, okay? Just just putting that you out You want there. to get that out off your chest. And that is one thing that nobody can look good in. But, like, they're cozy and they're warm and they go down to your feet and yeah, they're flat and they're... when you sleep in them, they, they, they ride, do sort of rise twist. up. They twist all around until you feel like you're being choked, but... That's what I don't like about them. Yeah. It sort of affords you different levels of warmth, though. If you're hot, you can just, like, hike it. That's what blankets are for. I know, but this is this is, like, an extra, you know complication yeah and if you're cold you like pull it all the way down your feet and curl up inside of it so it's your own little sack you're just rationalizing it it's your embryonic sack no it's your plaid no. flannel embryonic sack it's your womb no fine whatever or long johns one just per- wear your long johns. one person's womb is another person's <laughs> i don't know what oh god fashion statement but anyway, what uh, I just just to wrap this little section up, that's not pink. That is salmon. No, salmon is more orangey. No, that is salmon. Salmon is the color of like lox or raw, like things. Exactly. Are, this isn't. This is pink. No, salmon's got a peachier look to it. You salmon, even the word mean like feels orangey. Well, that's. I was feeling salmon when you came around the corner. I wasn't feeling pink. Do you want to look closer? It is pink. That's pink. No, keep keep it a good distance. <laughs> get near that. It's kind of grubby. Whoops. Anyway, no, you look great. And and anyway, we're on radio, so we can look however yeah. we want. <clears throat> Who cares if I'm wearing pink I or salmon? I didn't exactly dress up, did I? I've been wearing these same clothes all week, gardening and everything. I was just luckily... You don't you... look too much worse for the wear. Well, I've got the blue cotton shirt. Let's see, I've got... She's going through her layers. I've got the <clears throat> silk, the silk uh, long underwear shirt. John is allergic to silk. When he wears it next to his skin, he gets a rash. Wow. It's very sad. That's crazy. And then I've got the blue cotton button down. I see. And then I've got the wool pullover. You are all blue. Yeah. Except for your green um, fingerless gloves. Yeah. But I, I feel kind of bad now that I started off. Blue and green by... shall never be seen. You're not supposed to wear blue and green together. So say the fashion people. Really? Because they're both cool colors. Or but something. that's those are the colors of Gaia. That's the f- proud I flag I of the Earth. I don't think Gaia probably wrote, you know, a fashion magazine. So that's probably where you know we're coming up with these contradictions. Wow. You can wear it. It's fine. 
Touche. It works. Now you got back at me. Works on you. <laughs> she, you know, it's pink versus blue and green. Who's got I can't the better? Remember the real saying. It's like blue and green shalt. Shalt. It's shalt an old. It's an old. It's like a. It's like a Bible verse. Shalt not inherit like the Bible earth. fashion chapter. <laughs> What if the Bible could have a fashion chapter? What do you think it would say? It would say wear your nightgown. They all just had on nightgowns, basically. So it's just not something I've thought about before. And I'm not going to No shoes. Or no, I guess they had little shoes. I'm not what is, <laughs> when my little boy wears his Birkenstocks, which isn't that often because he mostly is in the summer barefoot or whatever. My brother-in-law, Matt, calls them his Jesus sneakers, which is kind of <laughs> nice. funny. Do you think everybody in the world knows what Birkenstocks are? We are not everywhere in the world. We're in Vermont. Everyone in Vermont knows what Birkenstocks are. Okay. I sometimes have a Birkenstocks tan on my feet. Not lately. I've been going for more of like the flip-flop thing. I tried Birkenstocks once for a short period. They just didn't quite... They make my me. feet look really big, and that annoys me because I don't have big feet. I have very small feet, and yeah. I'm, I'm kind of proud of my small feet. I always think of Fred Flintstone when I see Birkenstocks. Does he wear Birkenstocks? I think so. He, it, wears, he wears a nightgown. I also think of... Um, like an asymmetrical. No, that's his wife. What do you think about those plastic clogs? What plastic clogs? You, you mean know. Crocs? Yeah. Jesus, say Crocs then. Because <laughs> I don't know what they're called. Um, my father has them in like all colors. Really? Yeah, he really likes them because they're light and he has on and off issues with foot fungus. So he really likes to air his feet out, which is unpleasant for everyone else, but it's delightful for him. Then John, my own husband, just bought a pair recently and I said, oh my God, has it come to this? What color? Navy blue. You would approve. Well, at least he went conservative. And he's him. like wearing Crocs. And I said, I don't know if I can be married to someone who wears Crocs. This might be, this may be the, the, the line, the, the deal breaker, yeah. honey. Mm -hmm. So then he got a pair of like rubber sandals and he started wearing them with socks, which was way worse. So the Crocs, the Crocs were kind of like a compromise. I see. Great. So you, you know what? They're, you're, you probably would like them. They feel like you don't have anything on your feet. They're made of like bean sprouts or something really light. The Crocs? I don't, I don't know. They're made of something really, it's like a foam that is weightless. Wait a minute. Crocs are made out of bean sprouts? No, I was just saying that. It's just some weird mixture of, <laughs> of really light revolutionary foam. Yeah. It's our our revolution, the shoe wear of our revolution, right? And they make croc decorations because, you know, crocs have like those little polka dot holes all in them. Right. They make little pins sort of or clips that can decorate the holes. So you can have no. little like ducks or rainbows or peace signs or something that you, you seem, can stick. You seem to know a lot more about well, crocs. I'm telling you, my father's been wearing them for years. So uh, and we, we all protested long and hard. And we've eventually given up now. The Crocs seem to be here to stay. Okay. You started this. So mm. don't roll your eyes. I'm sorry. Me. I'm looking out the window desperately trying <laughs> to think of something else to talk about. But I'll, it... I'll think of something to talk about. Hold on a second. All right. Why don't you introduce the show? How about oh, that? Because you do it so nicely. But why can we never remember to introduce the show when we Because we're start. just so excited to talk. Okay. All right. You guys are... In fact, listening to 11th Hour Radio, coming to you live from Royalton Community Radio, WFVRLP 96.5. What else did I need to say? Oh, you're you're listening to Christina Stikos and Emily Howe, and we do this every Friday at 11 a.m. We, we do. We actually do. For like the last three and a half. Hey, you know what? What? When it gets to be spring, we'll have been doing this for four years. That's amazing to me. I know. I didn't even think I was going to live this long. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I hear you. It's very weird. Um, We've seen a lot of changes. Yeah. Okay. I have a question for you. All right. Do you really think that he needs to advertise Pepsi at the Tunbridge, Tunbridge General Store? Does he have to advertise Pepsi? No. I think Pepsi gives you those. Are you talking about that like giant billboard thing? Yeah. 
I think Pepsi gives you those things. Yeah, but you don't have to put them up. With your name on them so you feel like you can't throw it away. You know, like when the Easter seal people or whatever it's called send you those little stamps in the mail, like like address labels and they have your name on them. And even though they say something annoying like, I don't know, some political message in the corner, like you feel like you have to keep them because they have your name on them. Yeah, like Amnesty International. Yes. Or Easter Seals, that's what it is. Easter Seals, that's the one I was thinking, yeah. Yeah, so how do you handle that? <clears throat> it's really hard to throw them away. So I'm assuming that the store probably has that same problem. I it's see. got their name on it, you know. Yeah. They could cut the Pepsi part off, maybe. Cover and just, it up with something just else. Just have their name? Sure. Hmm. Okay. You know, I don't that's, know. Well, because that's what you can do with those uh, stickers. Yes. You, <clears> you can take actually. A pair of scissors and I and have you snip off the little cross or whatever that's on the side there. Yeah. If you don't feel like. I have done that. Doing that. But do you feel guilty using them? If you don't pay the new uh, charity. I don't know. They don't really send them to me. My mom gets them all the time, but. You get out of that. So one. yeah, I did get out of that question. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't. You don't what? get out of the question well it's not it's not they're not spending um they're not spending money on me that they wouldn't have already been spending whether i use them or not that's how i feel that's true and of course if you do leave the the symbol on then you're promoting their organization essentially right free advertising free advertising that's right yeah 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 so uh, i had my last day of gardening for my clients uh Yesterday. Your last, like, last, 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 last? No. No, I mean, like, for the year. For the season. Yeah. Yeah, unless... So some gardening emergency, like, ah, come, quick, there's a gopher eating my bulbs. Yeah, there, there's still some possibilities that could crop up. And, and in fact, if they still have compost at Central Supplies, I'm going to uh, probably do one day next week and get a, a truckload of compost. I think they do. I just went there yesterday... And I got a new spigot for my barn. Awesome. Because the old one is broken. Nice. And I've been hauling water for a long time. Spigot is a weird word. Spigot. Spigot. Is it spigot? It's spigot. Or spigot. spigot. Like an ingot. That's a good spelling word. Ingot. Do you ingot? know what an ingot is? It's like a hunk of gold. Yeah. So a spigot. <laughs> the spigot is like a... Spigot. It's not spigot. It's spigot. I could look up spigot and see if it's like picket. Picket fence, spigot fence. It's not. It's like spigot. Yeah. Spigot. Spigot. Yeah. Stupid English language. Sorry about that. You know what? I keep writing the word this this week. <clears throat> I keep writing the word rescue with a Q in it, which is really weird. That's I grotesque. Know, I know perfectly <laughs> well. Burlesque. I know perfectly well there is no Q in the word rescue, but I keep writing R-E-S-Q-U-E. I had a spelling word for you if we're going to go in that direction. <clears throat> All right. You ready for well, it? Wait, I have to uncut my pen. pen. And then we'll go back to my last like gardening day. I like these juicy pens, though. They bleed through. Mm. All right, go. Penalty. P- what? Plea. <laughs> what? P- penalty I, or plea? <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> I don't even know this word. Panoply. If you don't know it, how am I going to spell I it? You're probably of, not even saying it right. It's one of those words I sort of know. Well, I looked at the pronunciation in the, in I've the dictionary. I've never heard of it. How am I going to spell it? Just give it a try. Say it again. Panel plea. What the hell does it even mean? What? <laughs> what is, is it? Okay, I'll tell you what it means. Kay. It means a complete or impressive collection of things. Like Penelope? What are you trying? <laughs> Panel well, plea? Yeah. Like one word or one, two? One. It's a complete, or it could be a complete set of armor or a suit of armor. What the hell? That doesn't make any sense. Panel plea? Just, just I would try. just write panel and plea. Try it. Panel, I'm going to give you a clue. <clears throat> Monopoly. That's what? my clue. Okay. Pan. But you have to be dyslexic to figure it out from that clue. Oh, plea. <laughs> <laughs> what are you coming up with? Panopoly. <laughs> Panopoly. Close, close. P A N O P O L Y. P A N O P L Y. What? Panoply. Well, it's the weirdest word in the whole universe, I think. No, it isn't. It's I just, just dumb. I, I can't use it for 
I can't use it in a sentence for you to help you understand it. Oh, my penalty is chafing today. See there. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, didn't you say it could be a suit of armor? Yeah. So pretend it's a suit of armor. I don't know. What's the other one? The other what? Definition. A complete or impressive collection of things. So it could refer to like a marble collection. What if you were trying to refer to a complete and impressive collection of armor? <clears throat> that would be a double panel plea. Panel pleas? Panel pleage. You've heard of a double entendre. This is Penal a double. Penal Gus. Is. <laughs> well, this was all a ploy to tell you about a collection that I have. That I don't is think... this your sugar packet collection? No, I hope you've thrown that bring, away. Don't bring way. that up. Don't bring that up. No, that's a sore spot. <laughs> Why? Because I gave it away and oh now I want God. it back. Was it starting to like moisture? Were they hard? Were the sugar packets getting I'm hard? I remember. Or were they it's been such a long time since I saw soaking it. Soaking up moisture and leaving the little blotches on the packet. No, packets. I think I very carefully would slit the back and take out the sugar, oh. if I recall. It was a long time ago. John collects matchbooks. It's kind of the same, but slightly less weird. <laughs> Does he have the George Lawrence matchbooks too? I think a couple. Yeah. Yeah, I've got one. Those are fantastic. They are. Those are those are matchbooks that have been or what they were originally white blank matchbooks that were painted by our friend George, who's an amazing uh, painter. I think mine is like an elephant. Yeah. So if you get one of his match books it's an original they're super cool they're they're the best <clears throat> i love seeing them on exhibit Do they have matches in them i've never opened it yeah yeah they're real they they're functional i wouldn't functional. i wouldn't open it cuz it would be like when you take the collector thing out of the package well that's how i feel like uh, my daughter my daughter had match books made for her wedding oh. with their name and the date so you can't use them. Yeah, well, I have them in my match basket. Well, I think you screwed up with the sugar packets. Then, if you use the sugar, it's no longer valuable now. You know, collection. don't don't not keep, that you have the collection. Don't keep don't. bringing up the sugar packets. <laughs> it just hurts me. You know what, Christina? What? I everywhere I've gone, the sugar packets look basically the same. So I'm that, wondering. Wait a minute. How this collection of yours? Wait a minute. Back up and back off. Well, it, I've never seen like restaurants have You're, personalized sugar. You are too young. To know about this. <laughs> I'm not too young. No, you are. Because this is a collection what, that I started. You were born before there was sugar? What? I I developed my love for sugar packets when I was in elementary school. So in those days, in the old days, <laughs> can you imagine saying that? Someday you'll be able to say that in the old days. In the old days, sugar packets were incredible. They had animals and trees. They were... And you could get a whole series of old cars, things like that. Why did this stop? What, I what have, happened? I have no idea. This is something we should research because it's a real loss to mankind. I thought they just all said like Splenda and they were either pale, nope. pale yellow or pale pink. That's how it is now. That's how it is now. I can't explain it. And that... Wow, the world has really gone downhill. But you see, this is why I'm so upset that I gave the collection away because... You can't have a collection like that anymore. But I do have this other collection, which I think is equally interesting. Oh, God. That's what you started to talk about like yeah. 10 minutes ago. All right. You know what it what? is? No. Guess. <laughs> guitar picks. Well, I do have a lot of, I do have a pretty good collection of guitar picks. I, figured, I do, actually. I figured you that's, would. That's another panel plea that I have. Panel <laughs> plea? <laughs> no, I collect bird wings. The whole wing? Yeah. The whole wing. Yeah. Have. Just the wing. We have a whole bunch of dead birds in our freezer. You can well, I don't, want, I don't want turkeys and ducks. Do you take the wing off the dead bird? No, people are a vegetarian. People give them to me. Oh. People give me bird wings. I have a bluebird. I have an oriole. I have a raven. That's my biggest one. That's cool. Yeah. So anybody can oh, give me one. God, it's... somebody thumped my window this morning and I meant to go and look beneath. Oh, a bird? Yeah. Ah. Uh, I have all kinds of things hanging in our big picture windows to make sure they don't, but I heard it thump this morning as I was getting up, and I usually go and look underneath to see if there's somebody under there stunned yeah, and forgot I, to. Yeah, I, I know that feeling. Well, we yeah. have some cool birds in the freezer, but they are meant to go to Jack Rowell because he's using them for tie flying their feathers, but I don't think he'll use all of them. I can hack their wing off for you. 
I think there's a woodpecker. Do you have a woodpecker wing? No, I don't. Well, I could give you that for Christmas. Okay, let it dry <laughs> dry out. I don't want it fresh out of the freezer. Yeah. Usually the ones that people give me have been dried out either by nature or by some uh, boric acid. What holds the feathers in? Why don't they all just fall out? The strength of God. Like, you know, a dead animal's hair falls out. Our hair falls out. Why? How do the feathers stick right in there so tight? It's a magical glue of love. Wow. Did you know about the magical <laughs> glue of love? There it is. I've revealed one of life's secrets for oh, you. Thank goodness. And it's time for some music. Oh. Can you believe it? What What will you be playing for We've us? got one called Beulah Land from Robert Resnick. Beulah. Here it is. Far away the noise of strife upon my ear is falling Then I know the sins of earth beset on every hand Doubt and fear and things of earth in vain to me are calling None of these shall move me from Beulah land I'm living on the mountain underneath the cloudless sky I'm drinking at the fountain that never shall run dry I'm feasting on the manna from a bountiful supply For I am dwelling in Beulah land Far below a storm of doubt upon my ear is beating Sons of men in battle long the enemy withstand Safe am I within the castle of God's word retreating. Nothing here can reach me, tis Beulah land. I'm living on the mountain, underneath the cloudless sky. I'm drinking at the fountain that never shall run dry. I'm feasting on the manna from a bountiful supply, for I am dwelling in Beulah land. Blow their cry cannot alarm me. I am safely sheltered here, protected by God's hand. Here the sun is always shining, here there's naught can harm me. I am safe forever in Beulah land. I'm living on the mountain, underneath the cloudless sky. I'm drinking at the fountain that never shall run dry. I'm feasting on the manna from a bountiful supply, for I am dwelling in Beulah land. Yeah. Woo! That was very cool. Thanks, Robert. Christina thinks Beulah is another word for heaven. That was my my wildest guess. Isn't it a whale? Oh, it's a beluga. Never mind. <clears throat> I was thinking it's a town in Maine, too. Yeah. We could be wrong on every one of these Excuse things. me for sniffing. That's all right. I still <clears throat> have remnants of last week's cold, although I'm feeling much, 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 much better. Oh. Um, Did you sneeze a lot? How come? I did. I had fantastic sneezes. Did you? How come people usually sneeze twice, like twice in a row? What? What's with that? Maybe once you do the one sneeze, it just turns everything kind of upside down, and so your nose needs to create, try to create an equilibrium. It's just odd, you know. It's very 
Yeah. Everybody sneezes usually twice, unless they sneeze like 17 times because they're having some sort of... If it's two, it'll either stop after two or it'll go on for a long time. that's true. Yeah. Do you know what... Like hiccups. You know what I learned this week? You know what what I learned during this election cycle? Just not to bring up a sore subject, but that truly, truly, truly anyone can become president... I think we knew that like quite a few years ago. Well, it just struck me, you know, like that that ugly, ugly little uh, first grader with the runny nose who goes around pushing everybody down on the playground. That that little little dude, he could become president. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! You're starting my weekend off very nicely. <laughs> just remember that. <laughs> Are you sadder about your sugar packets or the election? Uh. I would say the sugar packet is a very personal loss, <laughs> <laughs> whereas the election has uh, is a complex panel plea of feelings and what a use of that word aspirations. Wow! So you don't know that you're using that word correctly, though, do you? No, but you've got to try. All you right. can't just you can't just fall down and play dead. You have to get up and try. Sometimes falling down and playing dead is really a good idea, though. That is true. Some guy, I saw it on the news, some guy outlasted some horrible terrorist situation by playing dead for something like three days. Uh, that I heard that. I heard that guy. It was on Veterans Day. They were talking yes. to him. And it was World War II, I think. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah, he was in a big massacre and he lay there I for 12 hours. I can't track of any of the horrific things that I hear lately. They're all just getting mushed into one big ball of horrific things that I hear. Yeah, that's that would be the world. <clears throat> Well, part of the part of the world that is a part of the world. I guess we're just gen- going to jump right to personal growth Friday because right, we, uh, we have to get into something with some substance. Uh, so here you can choose. I had um, I wanted to talk about friends who live without heat. Like, what do you mean? Nobody. Well, I know I know people who in no, rec- I do recent- too. But like, but but they have body heat. Yeah, but they don't have heat in the winter. They don't have central heat. and Central heat is different than not heat, isn't it? Well, okay, central heat or any kind of heat that's generated by a device, whether it's a wood stove or oh. people who just live in a house without heating in the winter. That's what I'm talking about. And I just, um, it's always pretty scary to me when I have friends who choose to live that way. I mean, you could say it's not a choice. It's either, it's usually either a financial uh, hardship situation or the person has physical uh, limitations or disabilities that prohibit them from, you know, making it happen, whether it's installing it or or, uh, maintaining, like putting wood in the wood stove can be hard for people. Anyway, so I just thought, um, if you had a friend in that situation, what, what do you think you'd do? That's my What's phone. That noise. Oh, okay. It's my daughter what calling from do? Italy. Hey, you're just going to dump her? I'm not going to answer the phone right now. All right. Doesn't she know what we do on <laughs> On Friday mornings? Well, uh, how many? It's six hours oh, later. Yeah, that's true. What would I do if I had a friend without heat? Well, I guess it would depend on how how willing they would be to have me intervene. We've definitely, you know, stacked wood and done things like that for people before, but yes. sometimes they don't want you to. Exactly. That That's a kind of interesting thing about it is sometimes they don't really want you to, and that's complex. And then you have to figure out whether they don't want you to because they just don't want you to for some other reason, or if they don't want you to for pride, in which case you just do it anyway or not. Yeah, it's, it's knowing how hard to push it or whether to just, um, you know, back off. I don't know. Um, I've, you know, sometimes a person who lives in a situation with no heat will, if they have electricity, they'll use a heating pad and just be under the covers for the whole winter with a heating pad. That kind of sounds nice. I would love to be under the covers for the whole winter. Yeah, you probably can't do that. No. You're a little too busy. I'm way too busy, but. Yeah. Well, okay, that was, I just was thinking about it. It's on my mind since it's getting colder and, you know, I do have friends in that situation. But, 
I I have wood. <laughs> I have heat. I couldn't live without it. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think I would do just about anything to to make sure that I had heat. But that's that's me. I just I heat need that. Heat in my creature. head feels a little bit more important than even like food half the time. I think in the winter. I mean, you could you could eat not as well for a winter. Yeah, I have but... enough baby fat. I can live on for a while, but I need to be warm or I can't even function. Yeah. I get really cold really fast. We were outside all day yesterday shoveling manure, which you would think would kind of keep you warm. And it wasn't a terribly cold day, but just being out and it was kind of dank and dreary. And I just got chilled from, you know, my gloves were all wet, not really from the manure, but I was, I was massaging this sheep that really likes to be massaged. And it had their wool was sort of like a sponge. So it was really wet. And after I did that, my leather gloves were sopping wet and I just kept wearing them. And it just ended up feeling miserable. That was yesterday? That was yesterday. Yeah, I was working outdoors all day yesterday. It was just dank. It was kind of dank. I don't know why. I didn't get cold. I mean, part of it is that I've, I always bring extra gloves and extra layers. So if I get cold, I can swap out. Layers are good. Yeah, and then I'm just usually moving enough and dragging, dragging tarps that are heavy. So that kind of warms me up. But if if I do sit down, if I sit down on a cold rock to have my lunch, that can be a mistake. So You don't want that old cold rock seeping no, up through your butt. That's right. The cold rock can really change your whole body chemistry mm-hmm. pretty quickly. So, um, what yeah. Are you, what are you doing for Thanksgiving? Are the kids coming home? I don't Any really kids? know yet. I don't know. I know one's coming. So I don't. I don't know. Thanksgiving. Um, my friend Susie came to visit us last weekend, and it sort of was a pre-Thanksgiving, early Christmas gift she gave my kids. This adorable little, um, she's Native American, and she had, makes these little miniature teepees that are perfectly accurate. I mean, she does every single bit by hand, and inside it's got all this stuff, like a tiny little bearskin rug and little, she makes little clay gourds and pumpkins and squashes and things. That's amazing. How, what does she do with it? Bows and what does she do with them? She has a couple of them in an art museum someplace because they're wow. so, so awesome. How did you get so lucky that she made the know. whole thing for you? Well, it's for the boys. And the coolest thing is they have little tiny working fire pits in them. She's, yeah. How does that she's work? She's layered like some fireproof thing underneath the base and you can make a little fire and she gave them a little cast iron kettle and showed them how to cut up like tiny little vegetables and then they boiled little tiny miniature stews and ate them that's cool it was really cool when she was explaining to this whole thing to me uh, ages ago she was like you make little tiny stews and i was i was thinking what are you talking about (laughs) sounds absurd you're gonna make a little tiny fire and a tiny teepee and you're gonna cook tiny food why would you do that but then it was so much fun yeah there's that fascination with tiny things, with miniature things, it's... I love miniature things. Yeah. Dollhouse is the, the dollhouse store in Barry closed. What? I've never even been there, and I've been waiting to I go know. there, and now I, it's gone? Well, it moved across the street, and then I drove by there, and I, it's gone. I a lot, really and the, do love tiny things. Yeah. I'm sad that it's gone, because I was also wanting to go into it. Do you think it just went someplace else? We should check. Okay. The vacuum cleaner store is also gone, but they moved well, down the street. There are other vacuum cleaner stores. No, you but get dollhouse this... stores are few and far between. Okay, but that vacuum cleaner store has a really nice guy, so I would well, recommend it. He didn't it. disappear. He's no, probably he, still around. He just went south on the same street. You can find him about a oh. half a mile away. Then your worries are over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not worried. He should have a vacuum slash dollhouse store. That would be good. Yep. Not really. Why? Why? I don't know. Why, though? I don't know. Sometimes I think the stores that have a weird combination of stuff do better. Isn't there, like, a pool store around here that has, like, pools, like, swimming pools, and, like, pool, the game? <laughs> and oh, I'm like, oh. how silly, but kind of cool. Hmm. I don't know. I think you're kind of making that up. No, I'm not making that up, actually. <laughs> you are. I'm really not. You mean the Vermont Country Store? No, they don't have swimming pools. You know what I was disappointed <laughs> I was really disappointed because I was looking for a broom and I thought, well, for sure, I'll go to the Vermont Country Store and get a nice broom. Well, they do have nice brooms, but they don't have the the one I want because the one I wanted had plastic or polyethylene bristles, the one that was the right, like, 
small size, kitchen sized. Yes. Of course, they have the fancy Amish ones. Yes. They're very expensive. Like, could you are, would you pay thirty dollars for a, a nice broom? Um, no. Maybe once every ten years. Yeah. Hoping it would last. But it's, the train's coming. <laughs> and oh my god! Oh, I should have told you. Still, my beating heart. <laughs> It never gets any less funny how extraordinarily excited you get every week don't, when the train comes. Don't you wonder who's <laughs> on it? Um, Listen to that. Who's on, who's traveling south? Santa. It might be. <laughs> that might be the Polar Do you Express. Think I tell my kids. When should I tell my kids? I mean, I'm assuming they already know, but I, if they don't, I don't want to say anything. And I kind of believe in Santa myself. Anyway, well, there's there's so. two levels to it. There's the the <laughs> level that, of course, there is a spirit of Santa Claus, and there's of nothing there is nothing false about that. No. You don't have to. Debunk and I've already it. kind of said that to them, but I haven't totally debunked the rest of it. And well, I'm what you, what you do? Pretty pretty. I think I could safely assume, since they do live out in the real world, and all the other little cynical friends of theirs. Well, here, here's here's what you do. You have to work with the older one. Yeah. And when they when they start figuring it out. Then you kind of bring them into the fold of continuing the charade with the younger one. Yeah. And then they feel like they're in on the secret and it's fun and they're not devastated. I hope it's not weird that I've sort of played along until they're really old. I think it's fine because uh, there is this beautiful spirit of Christmas that can yes, exist. Yes, I've always stressed that part. I've always stressed that part. Not so much the like, like there's, that really there's a, a physical... Old yeah, man sneaking but I, into our house at night. Well, I know we've talked about this before, but what do you do when you go to the mall and there's the fake Santa? Well, luckily in Vermont, we don't have any malls. We do. Oh, we, they are Santa's helpers. Everyone who does good is a Santa's helper. Okay, but you don't pretend it's Santa. No, they usually look you like know, drunk like, or something. Oh, there's Santa. I would never, that was where I drew the line. It's no. like, that fake Santa, that is a fake Santa. No, yeah. We've, I made it really we've clear. We've definitely. <laughs> that is not Santa. Don't. Don't think Santa's like that. No, he's not. Nothing against people who do that professionally, but there is a big difference between, you know. You and Santa. Well, yeah, and Father Christmas and. St. Nicholas. That guy shaking the the bell. Yeah. At the mall. What mall are you talking about? <laughs> are you like, Emily, there are malls in Vermont. Not There's one, well, or they're, what are they called? Um, they used to not call them malls. They call them um, shopping, shopping centers units or, or centers, shopping centers. <laughs> <laughs> they just did, what was, they were big flat buildings. A panoply of par- shopping excellence. <laughs> panoply. Par- parking lots. Panoply. You want to call it panoply, but well, it's you not. You said, hint, monopoly. Because I thought it would help you with the spelling part. Well, it didn't. So now <laughs> no. you screwed up big time. Okay. Whew. Monopoly. Manoply. Panoply. I'm going to work Panopolo. on that. I'm going to go home. I do, have a, I do have another personal growth Friday um, issue for us if we'd like to tackle it. <clears throat> All right. Tackle away. Um... Well, you know, I was sick and I, and I got through my illness for the most part, um, just just a bad cold. But the sickness, as it turns out, distracted me from some of my, from running some of my usual tape loops in my head. You know how that is? Yes. You get in a rut with how your brain is working and thinking. Um, so that was my subject. I thought we might want to talk about tape loops. And, and do you suffer from tape loops Very in your much. head? Yeah, especially at like three o'clock in the morning. So what? Um, I will just keep repeating the same situation over and over and over and over again in my head. Or it doesn't have to be a situation. Sometimes it's even music, like the same line of a song will go, and I cannot make my brain move. But on. that's I think that's in a different category because oh. the kind of, the kind of tape loop that I'm talking about actually makes you feel crummy about yourself. That's sort of part oh. of the definition. You know, it's something. Well, those are just like. Your little own personal mantras that are stuck on in you. Those yeah. kind of things. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I have those too. Where do they come from? Past experience. Every time I mess something up, I always say like, oh, well, you know you're not good at that. 
or some, I, and it's, it didn't really come from me not being good at that. It just came from me not believing that I could actually do that. And every time I mess up, it reinforces it again. Even if I've succeeded more than I've messed up, the mantra of you're a mess up sort of overrides the, hey, you've done this plenty of times successfully. Yeah. And it, to me, it proves that thoughts can create feelings because you think the thought and then you have the responding feeling that is usually a little bit of a feeling of hurt inside your chest or your stomach or your throat. There's different places. That's very interesting too, is like mm -hmm. which part of your body does it resonate in yeah. when you think that thought? Where does, I get, where does I it get hurt? little heart palpitations. Really? Yeah. Yeah. There, well, I went to the doctor one time because I was like, I think I am having a heart attack. I must be having some sort of heart issues. And they're like, no, that's stress. Uh -huh. So mm -hmm. you just, you just, your thoughts sort of manifest themselves all over your body. Well, can you, do you think you can reprogram your thinking? Mm, maybe. You I ever, have not been very successful yet, but. Did you ever. Did I'm better at it because I'm a little more aware of it now. I'm like, oh, guess what? You aren't the crappiest person in the world. Did you're you, close. Did you ever try affirmations? Total. I don't know. I always feel like a dope when I do that. Looking in the mirror Ooh, and saying, you are I wonderful. am beautiful. Or... Yeah, no, I can't do that with a straight face. No. Cannot. Well, then you should try to do it until I, you can do it with a straight face. I try to do it when I'm parallel parking because I'm really bad at that. But you know what? You I could parallel park perfectly lots of times, but I forget that. Every time I go to parallel park, I think, oh, God, I'm so bad at this. I'm never going to get in this space. Well, I'm should... going to be sticking out in traffic. Everyone's going to be mad. Everyone's going to be honking at me. I'm going to take so long. I'm going to have what? to do it four times. Guess what you could do? There's a mirror in your car. You can look up in the mirror no, and say, No, mirrors I, don't work for yes, me. <laughs> I can parallel park. I am beautiful. I can parallel park. I don't think being beautiful has anything to do with your parallel what about parking. This? What I've about seen this? some really ugly people parallel what parking. What about this? Christina, what if every time you walk by the mirror in the bathroom <laughs> or something, you kind of look sideways at yourself and go, Hi, beautiful? What about no, that? Then no, that would, I can't do that. Then I would be feel kind of, like a jerk. Why don't you try to be funny? Just try it. It'd be funny. You might laugh at yourself and then it would be fun and then you'd do it all the time. And I then laugh you, at myself a lot. Then you'd start believing it. All right. Well, I don't know if it's going to help with the parallel parking, but just... <laughs> I think it all kind of fits uh, Why do like a do that? avalanche. You know what? Nobody can parallel park. They should get rid of parallel parking. Does it actually save space? No. You're just from, you know how you can be from a, um, connected to an, a time gone by? You can also be part of a time that has yet to be, in which case I would say that you are part of the hovercraft generation. Can I just say that this parking style is like against my religion and can I just park any way I want? You didn't hear what I said. No, I did. I'm just you... moving. I don't want hovercraft. I don't like things that fly. No, you will like hovercraft because they're just about a foot over the ground and you can start them and stop them and hover in them and they park very well. Do they go higher? Do they go higher than a foot off the ground? Because if they do, I don't want anything to do with them. You don't have to. You're in charge of a hovercraft. It's not in charge of you. It's not like these automatic cars. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that does not make any sense to me. People are like, oh, you turn on the blinker and the car will automatically turn in 14 seconds and you're like... What if you're not at the road? It just turns. I don't understand. You know, my GPS thing that we sometimes use is never really absolutely accurate. It's like, turn left now. And if you really turned left right then, it would be really bad. You would hit something. You're supposed to collaborate with that, well, that robot. Super bossy and just not... <clears throat> You have to learn to collaborate. Correct. And they never want you to go where you want to go. They have their own idea about where you should go. And it's always stupid. You know, I don't think it's smart to complain about robots, especially not on the radio. They might, they might be listening. Come. <laughs> be careful. Oh, Just be careful. Never know. Hey. Art artificial intelligence is everywhere. I, hmm? I yeah? was going to ask you all the different clickbait this for this week because we never talk about we haven't talked about that lately oh clickbait i would love to but we got to listen to a oh, song. oh yeah all right i'll talk to you about it after you okay. listen to the song okay this is a pretty is it wicked cold song. in here or is it just me it's kind of cold i think it's when it's windy it's you know christina's not windy <laughs> there's no wind <laughs> well listen to this
Aberdidgery Swamp Dream by Davy Davis and Company. I feel like I could play a didgery diggery didgery do. Didgery do. Didge. They're they're probably bigger than you. They're big, 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 big. It doesn't <clears> matter, <throat> does it? I drive a car. Size. It's bigger than me. Okay. Good point. <laughs> Never thought of that. <laughs> well. Uh, did you want to talk about clickbait? Oh, I totally forgot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because I have something also I want to talk about. And, right. But if you've got some clickbait... Um, the thing that really got me this week was there was this picture. This stay-at-home mom had had put this out there. She had a glass front cabinet and a big pile of <laughs> porcelain plates had toppled over and sit inside of the cabinet and they were all like toppled up against the glass. So if you open the cabinet, a huge pile of antique porcelain plates were going to fall down and crash. And she was asking the internet in general what to do, how to open the cabinet safely, which I, already kind of intrigued me because I was like, yeah. oh, 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 I know. But then I clicked on it and I was reading everyone's comments and they were, the comments were insane. People were like, flood your house with water and then you can open the door safely and they'll float out. And other people were like, drill into the wall behind it and pull them out or, and then just like fantastical, like hire tiny gnomes to go in there. And Well, you say that as soon as you saw it, you know what to do. What would, I had no idea when I saw that. I what would, would just you do? whip the cabinet open wicked fast and catch and, them and try to catch them. Oh, and probably right. one would break, but whatever, you know, it was a sort of a, a dumb thing because everyone was going through these insane, you know, tactics to save the dishes while in, in fact, destroying like other things like drilling through the back of the house to get to it. I was like, I don't know. I think I'd rather let one of the dishes break and see if I could catch some of the others instead of drilling a giant hole in my house or flooding my house with water. How really. many How many responses do you think there were? There, there were hundreds and they were really, almost all of them were funny. People were incredibly serious. Like you need to get a long stick and it, like everything was just go back in time and stack them better or just, I don't know. I don't know. Or you no. could break the glass next to it and reach your hand through oh that's a good one actually that's a that's several people suggested that. yeah so that, i was like all right one. here are the common sense people in the world yeah flooding your house with water not so practical no <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'm so always what was your clickbait i'm oh, oh, sorry you weren't done talking no i i wasn't uh i didn't have any clickbaits in particular oh. i that i had an i if i'd if i'd had if I'd done my homework, I could have told you because I certainly, I'm very suspicious about clicking on things in general. So I have to, things like that, I would be nervous about where it would take me. Oh, I know. So I, 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 I'm a little paranoid about it. Clicked on something last week and immediately it said like, your computer has a virus. It is going to wipe out your hard drive in five minutes. Yeah. And I started to freak out and I went and grabbed a, like a zip drive and I just started dragging like my writing and stuff onto it, which of course it was just, it was a fake annoying thing trying to get you to click on like the, okay, I'll install this now or whatever. To buy the Mac helper or something. That's a classic one that's a a scam. But yeah. I've been clicking on a lot of silly clickbait this week though, because I'm just trying to uh, distract myself from clicking on all the things that make me angry and sad well i've actually been clicking on a lot of news articles and videos so i, I did can't, i did that I, at first i've overwhelmed myself and now yeah, I'm just i can't i'm addicted waiting. i i try i get home after a hard day's work and i just start start in on it but i but as a balance to it i've been working on my poetry books so oh, i go good. back and forth between the two but uh, speaking of gift giving, which is just just before we go, because I know you love to give presents. I do. You love it. But I just want to tell you, um, well, I want to ask you this question. Have you ever felt bad about a gift that you gave somebody? Anything pop into your mind there? Like, because like you, you think they don't like well, it? You, re- you realize after the fact that it just was and there's something not right about what you did. Um, I don't know. I mean, I often think that like every time I give somebody something, I'm like, Emily, you liked that. It doesn't mean that they like it. But I figure that people know that I'm just sort of goofy enough that they don't have to like it and they can just throw it away or, or yeah, give it away. Yeah, it's not going to be care. like a million dollar purchase. No. 
Yeah. Well, but I, I don't, I've never done anything that I felt was super offensive, really. Well, for some reason, this popped into my head. I did uh, buy you underpants. Sorry. Oh, the Bernie? <laughs> the Bernie underwear? Yeah. I knew you weren't going to be offended by your Bernie underwear. No, though. I wasn't offended. Okay. I think I gave them to somebody okay. I thought would actually wear that's them. That's perfect. I love it I... even more when people can re-gift something. Yeah, it sure. saves them. I think that's great. It saves them a step. It does. Yeah. And sometimes I'll say, like, especially when I give my music away, I say, hey, if you don't like it, just give it to somebody else. Mm-hmm. I just want to give them that out. But uh, one stands out in my mind when uh, my friend Janet was getting married and I couldn't go. So I, I you know, ran out to get a, a present for her. And I decided that I wanted to give her a book of poetry by Billy Collins. I um, love Billy Collins. Yeah, because he's, he's humorous and, uh, you know, sometimes it's very profound. And, and um, I had heard some... I heard him speaking on the radio about love and this and that. So I went out to the bookstore and I, they only had one Billy Collins book and I was kind of rushed and I didn't want to check other bookstores. So I bought it. But the name, you want to know what the name of the the book is? What? Ballistics. Wait, you gave this to someone as a wedding present? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And I felt bad about it ever since because I didn't take the time to get like a different Billy Collins book that had a better title. Well, should I be feeling guilty about no, this years later? I don't think I don't think so. It's fine. Well, I'm going to have to talk to her about it directly. I think. Yeah, but I, I, I think I never did bring it up. I was too embarrassed. <laughs> Because I sent ever it to accidentally her. accidentally given somebody the wrong thing that you meant to give to somebody else? That happens in big families a lot. My grandmother was always accidentally wrapping up or putting the wrong tag on the wrong thing. So like, you know, a kid would get a set of dish towels and an adult would get, you know. And then you just pass it. You unwrap it and, then, yeah, and figure yeah. out who it belonged to and then just pass it over. Yes. Yeah. Oh. I don't know. Yeah. It's that season. It's, it's coming. It's the season I know. I'm getting ready to make my bookmarks. Oh, good. I'm so, I love doing it so but much. Don't be giving me one of those like thigh sized things <laughs> that you gave me before. What was what? it? The candy cane, the gross pomegranate candy cane that you could not make anybody take. And you tried to make me take it for weeks and I wouldn't take it. And you finally like hit it in my. Did I? I can't remember what you did, but I... all of a sudden there's this like enormous giant pomegranate. Oh, I candy cane. saw those the other day. No. God, <laughs> where like, was I? I saw that like they had a huge display of those. Thanks for reminding me. No, do not buy those. Do, I don't know what <laughs> possessed you to buy those in the first place. They look pretty. You could like club someone over the head with them and kill them. They're huge. You can't even fit them in your mouth, Christina. They're beautiful. I got they it. Are, I will say, you know what? Candy is beautiful. I think it was a natural one from the co-op, yes. believe it or not. Remember that ribbon candy that there used to be? Yeah, that's awful. That's I know gross. it's awful. It tastes awful. It's awful for you. But isn't it pretty? Isn't it kind of neat to see? Well, it's probably really neat to see how they make it. Yes. I love the taffy machine at uh, that place in Maine. Yeah, that stretches it. Yes. Yeah. We should have a craft day. Well, I don't think we can make taffy. Well, we can we make stuff, try. though. We can make anything we want. I have glitter. Okay. Okay? All right. All right. And we hope that everyone else will have a craft day. And make things to give away whatever holiday you celebrate. It's definitely better it's just, it's to just make a, things. It's really fun. Instead and you get to get them. together and eat and drink and make stuff and spill glitter on the floor. And it's worth it's worth One it. One of my wedding couples that came to our wedding business this year said that glitter is the vomit. No. Maybe they said something worse. Maybe they said glitter is like the STD of the craft world or something because it's... It, that's a nice note to end Sorry. on. Sorry. Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll be back next Friday, and it'll be after Thanksgiving, so you'll be all reclined and listening to us. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll Bye, s- you we'll guys. See you soon. Have a good weekend. Let the midnight special shine a light on me. Let the midnight special Shine the ever loving light on me. Y'all become Miss Rosie. How the world did you know? Will I tell about the apron and the dress she wore? Shawl up around her shoulders, piece of paper in her hand. Will she go to see the governor to release her man? Let the midnight special shine a light on me. Let the midnight special shine the ever loving light on me. Yeah.
get up in the morning, yes, a big bell rang. To go march to the table, you find the same old thing. No folks on the table, ain't nothing in the pan. Read the same thing about it. You're in trouble with the man. Let the midnight special shine a light on me. Let the midnight special shine the ever loving light on me. If you ever go to Houston, boy, you better walk right. Yes, you better not bother. And you best not fight. That cop will arrest you. Man, sure will take you down. You can bet your bottom dollar. You can jailhouse bound. Let the midnight special. Shine a light on me Let the midnight special Shine every loving light on me <laughs> Yes, you get up in the morning And the ding dong rain Go march to the table, find the same old thing. Blackjack, same molasses, and have the sour belly fat. Yeah, the same thing about it, and you won't get that. Let the midnight special shine a light on me. Let the midnight special shine a ever loving light on me. Let the midnight special shine the ever-loving light on me. 